Hey guys, we are here at CRS in Nashville. I'm talking to John Schneider. About things you want, you don't want to know. <laughs> you just don't want to know. <laughs> well, hopefully we can come up with something you guys want to hear about. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> so, John. So glad to be here. This is fun. Yeah, thank you so much for talking to us. Sure. It's very exciting. You know, when I used to do country music, there was no such thing as this. Oh, really? No, we used to have to go to the radio stations and uh, all throughout the country, like on a bus oh. or a van or a bicycle. And uh, it's so wonderful to have so many people in one spot at the same time. I yeah. imagine, like, if you were going to all of them on the bicycle, it was probably uphill both ways and barefoot, right? In the snow. Okay. But this is great. It is amazing to me what's happened to country music. It's amazing to me what's happened to radio. Mm. And TV. Just well, say, TV that is fantastic. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> but, you know, TV from uh, since 1979 with the Dukes of Hazard, uh, 39 years ago. <laughs> Uh, to Smallville. Smallville was a great show. It was on for 10 years. That's awesome. And I'm on a, a show now called The Haves and the Have Nots, a Tyler Perry show. So I'm no stranger to television. Tell us a little bit about this new project, Odyssey. Every song I believe that, that you record as an artist now has to be a potential single. There are no B sides. There are no My Uncle Wrote a Song, so it's going to be an album cut, <laughs> which is a song that no one would ever hear, but if you sold a million albums, you would tacitly sell a million of your uncle's song. You gotta think about that sometime other than now. But now we have to put out, every time we put out a song, it has to be amazing. If it's not amazing, it's not gonna make your cut, right? Um, so it's, it's really quite amazing how high the bar is now for the entertainers. Uh, and then, if you have a song that does really well, your next song better do a little better, or you're now a failure. It's so hard. That sounds very tough. It's so hard. <laughs> it is. It's hard. But it's hard all the way across the board in all kinds of music. But uh, I think it's made for much better music. The great thing about it is as much as the music business has changed, it's still all about the song. If you find a song or you write a song that makes people listen and makes people think, makes people laugh or giggle, or changes them in some way in three minutes, then you're doing something right. I'm having, a, I'm having more fun than ever. I think now at, at uh, 57 years old, there's, there's some truth to you can't sing the blues until you've lived the blues. You can't really sing a song about a scarred, tired, <laughs> but gonna get through the day guy with his pickup truck unless you have been that you know like dogs know when you're afraid of them fans know when you're lying <laughs> right and uh, I'm not lying these songs are the truth and it's it's wonderful to be part of them that's awesome so for Odyssey my understanding of the project is that you ask these artists who um, have done amazing things throughout their careers as well to come up with their favorite song that they've written and never cut. Is exactly. That correct? Okay. So these are songwriters who've had millions of songs sold, millions of records sold. Uh, so the question to them was, I want to hear the song that you wrote. And as soon as you finished it, you knew this was a hit. You knew somebody was going to snatch this song up. And nobody has. Uh, I, I say nobody's been able to hear it the way you do. So those are the songs I want to hear. So these are amazing songwriters, amazing singers as well, that I've had the wonderful opportunity to be able to grab part of their soul and exhibit it with a wonderful band 52 times. We're, we're recording 52 songs, we're doing 52 music videos, and 52 documentaries called <laughs> Artist Studio Access, because we have eight cameras in the studio as we record these songs. So when one of them becomes a runaway hit, we won't have to go back in the studio and fake it that we were there. We actually were there. Well, that's very ambitious. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. What is the sense in having a small dream? Speaking of dreams, yes. when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Exactly what I am today. That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I, I believe that we are uh, we're really in touch with our design when we're about eight years old. Whatever that is you want to be when you're eight is probably what you were supposed to be. And then life and enemies and sadly people who love you will try to talk you out of it because they don't want you to be disappointed. Well, I'd rather be disappointed following my dream 
then be happy following yours, right? So I, I have never been happier or felt more in touch with my little eight-year-old self than I am right now. That's beautiful. I think I would tell myself to not overthink it. Uh, I would tell myself that you really can't force anything, that you should follow your gut, which I do, but don't allow well-meaning friends or family to talk you out of your present goal. It's good advice. Yeah, you know, because they don't they don't mean it. But a lot of times you'll you'll get off your path, you'll get off your off your course because someone you trust and you know loves you will say, you know, you really should try. If I had taken that advice, I'll tell you one one time that I absolutely didn't. Uh, I helped start an organization called Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. We've raised now close to six billion dollars for children's hospitals. It's incredible. Every, every knowledgeable person in the telethon business, in the children's charity business, everyone to a man, everyone to a woman said, this idea will not work. That dog will not hunt. So my advice to my younger self and your younger self and everybody out there is, if you can get enough experts to tell you you are on the wrong track, <laughs> patent it. Run with it, devote your life to whatever that is, because experts don't know nothing. What else? What else? I got my cheat sheet. Look at that, you got her cheat sheet. <laughs> Let's All give it right. Oh! Ah. If you could collaborate with anybody, living or dead? Living or dead. Who would it be? On what? Like anything? Well, I guess music is what I'm generally asking about, but go with it where you will. I lived with Johnny Cash. So if I hadn't lived with Johnny Cash, I would say Johnny Cash. I knew Waylon Jennings really well. I think I would want to sit with Hank Sr. Mm. I'd want to sit with Hank Williams and say, how do you see that bottle of rye? How do you see that curb? What is it about this particular sunrise that makes you think, right? Yeah. I think he, he was really the master of simplicity in the most seemingly mundane things, which really is the key. Is there anybody that you listen to that might surprise your audience? <laughs> most of the time I listen, I have XM radio, right? I'm serious. I listen to channel 148 most of the time, which is it's old time radio, which is things like The Shadow, like uh, Gunsmoke, uh, Have Gun, Will Travel. They're <laughs> stories. But in those stories, in shows like The Jack Benny Show and uh, uh, George and Gracie Allen, George Burns, Gracie Allen, they always have a band like the Phil Harris Orchestra, Benny Goodman, Artie Shaw. Uh, I love to listen to that stuff because these were really outlaws in their own right. They were, yeah, it was big band, but these were, Artie Shaw was married like 47 times, right? So these are, these are really people who loved what they did and they were really on the edge of what they were doing. Even though they did it with a clarinet or a saxophone, they were still amazing people. Um, so that's who I listen to. Awesome. It also helps me write. It helps me write. There, there are perspectives in, in shows like X-1 and all these bizarre uh, radio shows that birthed shows like The Twilight Zone that will really make you think from the inside out. And it'll make you turn a lyric in a way that you normally wouldn't. Uh, like we were just talking with somebody earlier and we talked about, I'm going to keep shaking babies and kissing hands till I get it right. <laughs> All right, well, John Schneider, what is next for you? We're going to keep, uh, we got 10 more songs in March to do for our Odyssey because we, we're only 22 into 52 for this year. Um, only. Wow. Uh, so we're going to keep doing that, keep that going. But really, I'm looking very much forward to getting back into, uh, into the studio. I'm hoping that the music will garner new attention to the movies we've done. Because in my soul, I'm a storyteller, whether it's visually or, or with a song. So uh, 
we're trying to crack this nut of turning fans into customers. And it, it sounds very capitalistic, but really that's what we're, that's what we're all about. Yeah. Uh, doing it, selling it, making enough so we can pay for what we're out of pocket and then do it again. Which, you know, everybody from Socrates to Shakespeare to Hank Williams Jr. have had the same problem. So it's not a new problem, but by God, we're going to solve it. Awesome. Well, you guys have any plans to take this Odyssey on tour? Oh yeah, yeah. We I hope so. I hope so. Awesome. That that's up to other people. We can't we can't. Uh, we're going to do a couple of a couple of shows in Texas, um, but hopefully someone will grab a hold of it. And uh, there's no no way we can do all these songs, all these videos, and all these documentaries and book a tour at the same time. Yeah. All right. Well, John, thank you so much. You're for so very to welcome. Us. What a delight. Yeah, it was great. great. Wonderful Thanks, talking man. with you. Enjoy the rest of your CRS. I will. You're fun. <laughs> You're fun. You got notes on your hand. <laughs> That's just because I have a terrible memory. That was really cool.